our worst times, God has always been faithful. He's always been good. He's been good when I wasn't good. Maybe that's just for me. I'm, a, I'm looking at a bunch of halos out there. But I know for me, the times that I hadn't been at my best, God's always been at His, and I'm thankful for that. Let me, uh, let me say tonight, I'm thankful that, that uh, Brother Matt Bennett from Oklahoma City is in the house tonight. Uh, will you let him know how much you appreciate Will you stand? He served for many years in the missions department at Oklahoma City. And I'm thankful that he has been here. We have struck up a friendship. I think he's trying to send me forth to Pakistan, I believe. And so we got to, I think we're going to go over some ice cream and talk about that a little bit later. And, uh, but I, I'm thankful that he made the, the journey out here to Tulsa, Jerusalem. And, uh, but it's an honor that he's in the house tonight. Also, I, 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 had, um, I had lunch today with my in-laws and my father-in-laws here today. And uh, for those of you all that don't know him, he didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway because I've got the mic and I'm standing behind the pulpit. And he can, he can get on me for this later. But uh, he is a free will Baptist pastor. Um, Now, now I have preached for him before, and um, and and I really just preach the way I preach, you know. So I mean, I I like Free Will Baptist. Uh, we've uh, we've we've got one thing they don't, and that's it. Y'all know what it is, and we we got the power of the Holy Ghost, and they're searching for it. And um, but he 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 told me something today that just stirred my spirit. You know, there's there's the Holy Ghost just. I, I, I want to be very careful how I say this, but I, the Holy Ghost just talks to me, you know, real blunt, you know, sometimes. And, and, and he's, he's living on the inside of me, and we're sitting here at this, this restaurant at Shiloh's today in Broken Arrow, and, and, and he told me something that my spirit just jumped because he said something that Pentecostals should always be saying. And a free will Baptist pastor looked at me today, and I'm so glad that he's family, looked at me and he said, you know, because he, he had, a, he had a, an accident uh, a few days ago and, and he hadn't been able to sleep in his bed. He's had to sleep in the recliner because his body is hurting so bad. And, and he listened to me last night as I began to preach the word that said that you have to speak to your mountain. And see, I got, I got Pentecostals who say they got something. And I ain't quite convinced that what they say they got, they got. And uh, this free will Baptist father-in-law of mine looked at me. He said, you know what? I just tried out what you said last night. He said, I began to speak to that thing and said, you know what? I'm going to lay in my bed and I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. And he said, for the first time, and I don't know how many weeks it had been, he said, for the first time, I slept all night long on my back in my bed because I spoke to that th my God. I don't know about you, but if it was you and your miracle, you'd be doing a whole lot better than patty cake, and I tell you that right now. Hallelujah. I'm thankful to know, I'm thankful to know that when the Lord said that if you'll have faith in God and speak to your mountain, that if you'll say it and don't doubt it, you'll have whatever you say. That's what he said. And he spoke it last night, and I'm glad to report that he slept like a baby in his bed for the first time, and it ain't going to be the last. Can I get out? Let me try that one more time. I said he did it last night and it ain't going to be the last. Hallelujah. Which leads me right into my text. If you have a Bible, I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter number 14. Acts chapter number 14 and, and flip over a few pages to Acts chapter 19 and just stick your finger in there and, and uh, go back to chapter 14. Don't get scared because there's five chapters. <laughs> My mother-in-law, who's not here tonight, she told me, on the other hand, she, you, you, you get one, one in-law and they'll, they'll say something to make your spirit start leaping out of your belly. 
And then she told me, on the other hand, to get me back down to reality, she said, man, you really preached a long time last night. She said, I heard something about brevity, and it was the opposite of whatever you said. So uh, I'm going to try to keep this short. Uh, I said try, so that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, you got to hold me to it. Acts chapter number 14, I, I, I want you to stand with me this tonight for the reading of God's word. Acts chapter number 14, I'm going to read verse number 1 through 3. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. But notice this next verse. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now flip over to chapter 19. Look at verse number 11. I'm going to read this out of the New King James. It said, Now God worked unusual. <laughs> He worked unusual miracles. I, I want to stop there and look at and tell you that does not mean take two Tylenol and call me in the morning. The Bible said that God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out from them. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we give this service to, over to you. I ask you tonight, God, that you will take it. God, that you will throw your weight around tonight night and show the devil who is boss. God, I ask you tonight, Lord, that you will heal somebody, that you will deliver somebody, God, despite what the medical report, despite what the doctor's report has said. God, we ask you tonight, Lord, that you will perform unusual miracles. God, that we will know that Jehovah Rapha is still on the throne, that you are the God that heals us, and we thank you tonight that you will show yourself alive and it is in the miraculous and powerful and the majestic name of Jesus Christ that we pray and somebody shout with the preacher amen and amen look at somebody before you're seated and tell them it's my time for my thing from my God go ahead and tell them hallelujah you can be seated Acts chapter number 14, where we begin tonight, is one of the most intriguing uh, passages to me because uh, this passage is basically talking about, in fact, there were what was going on here in the scriptures. There were some unbelieving Jews who were basically going on a whispering campaign. <laughs> I, we might have fun tonight. They were going on a whispering campaign, didn't even have the decency to catch them out in the, in the lobby or the parking lot. They were whispering in the middle of the church service. And they were whispering because what they were wanting to do was to cause uh, confusion and disbelief and suspicion about the things that Paul and Barnabas were preaching. Uh, they, they weren't waiting for the service to be over, they were doing it while Paul was on point number two, uh, short of his poem. Uh, Paul is preaching. I can just see Paul preaching his heart out. And there are some unbelieving, matter of fact, the actual translation says they were rebellious Jews. Uh, they were church folk who declared one thing but were living another. They started whispering. That's why I always pay attention when I'm preaching uh, when people start whispering. Um, it says that they started whispering while he was preaching in the ears of the Gentiles to stand against the word of God and to begin to 
doubt uh, those who are standing for truth. And I, I read that passage and I just stopped uh, and I began to look at the American church. And may I tell you that that same spirit is ever true today. When you are standing for truth, uh, when you are proclaiming the gospel, Satan will try his best uh, to cast doubt and unbelief in the minds of people who are hearing the word just like a plague just like a disease he attempts to get people to not be receptive to the word of God so while the preacher is preaching on healing the enemy begins whispering in your spirit oh yes yeah, some healer Jesus is uh, you're sitting here and your body's racked with pain some Jehovah Rapha he is, you went to the doctor and proclaimed your healing and he said that what you had has already spread throughout your body. Oh, some Jehovah Jireh he is, some, some provider God is, uh, they found out today that, that that your house is going into foreclosure. You found out that you, you can't pay your bills and you've been laid off uh, from your job and, and this ain't working out. But you go ahead and, and believe all that spiritual stuff. Uh, this is reality. And what is happening is the enemy is trying to place seeds uh, of doubt and unbelief uh, to get people to reject uh, the word of God. God, but this is what got my attention. This is what made me begin to just shout up on the inside. Is while all of this was going on, while all the whispering and the talking and the not paying attention was going on, while Paul was preaching the gospel, it said that he kept right on preaching. Because can I tell you that a testimony will outweigh an opinion? any day of the week because Paul knew that if God be for me who in this world could stand against me it makes no difference when people try to distort what is true if you have got a testimony you can preach the gospel and you don't have to be afraid you don't have to run away but you can square your shoulders back and declare thus saith the Lord regardless of who or what that tries to get in your way. Your Bible said that Paul and Barnabas, I like this, that they had a revival meeting because it said they stayed in town for a long time. And there they spoke boldly into and for the Lord. And because they preached the word and because they preached the gospel, the Lord had their back the entire time. That lets me know that when you're doing something for God, if you're standing for God and proclaiming the word of God, then God himself will come to your side. He'll stand with you when nobody else wants to be by you. Matter of fact that same Paul said that all men forsook me but the Lord stood by my side and he gave me strength and when they spoke the word turn me back up. When they spoke the word of God with boldness God himself your Bible said gave testimony unto the word of his grace and he did it because he granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands so that lets me know this when you declare the word the Lord will have your back. When you declare his word, he will confirm it with signs and wonders. When you declare his word, he's gonna heal somebody. When you declare his word, he's gonna set somebody free. When you declare his word, he's gonna put somebody's family back together again. When you declare his word, he'll let you sleep in your own bed at night. When you declare 
declare his word. Something is going to change. His word is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. Matter of fact, the gospel of Matthew chapter 8 said uh, that, that it was his word that cast out devils. The psalmist said in 107 that he sent his word and healed them. Matter of fact, it was in Mark chapter 4, I spoke of this last night, that the disciples were being tossed around on a boat. Jesus was taking an afternoon siesta and that finally deciding to wake up out of his nap. He gets the sleep out of his eyes. He walks up to the bow of the ship and begins to speak the word. The word began to speak the word. And he said to the winds, wind, be still. And the Bible said that the wind ceased. That's where we like to stop. But the Bible keeps on going and said that there was a great calm. You know what that lets me know? If you want peace in the middle of your storm, speak the word. If you've got sugar diabetes and you want it to regulate, speak the word. If you've got rheumatoid arthritis and you want it to get out of your body, speak the word. If you want a great calm in the middle of your chaos speak the word for when we speak the word we should expect nothing short of a divine miracle because I am just convicted enough to know that when God's word goes forth there are miracles in the air so if you need a healing in your body tonight speak the word if you need deliverance tonight, you don't need a preacher. You need to speak the word. Let me take you to another passage of scripture. I'm almost done. Can you believe that? Your Bible says in Hebrews chapter number two, I wouldn't either. Hebrews chapter number two, it said that therefore we ought to remember the things that we have heard lest any time we allow them to slip. I wonder how many church services we've been in. And we can't tell the preacher what they preached on last week. Because we've gotten in such a routine of churching. Because this is just what we do. Uh, there, there's been things in my life that of importance that somebody will say something to me and I can tell you a year later what they said, what I was wearing the day they said it, where I was standing when I heard it because it is forever in, stamped in my mind but as church folk I better go on but as church folk we'll come to church and we'll We'll, we'll shout while it's going on. But we easily let it slip from our mind. But the writer of Hebrews, arguably the Apostle Paul again, said that we ought to remember the things that we have heard. You see, we, can't, we cannot afford to forget the things that we have heard. We cannot forget the things that God has done for us because of if He has done it one time before, He will do it again. I, I was thinking because I, I've been in this location, I think, what, it's three years now? Has it been three? Uh, that I have walked up this step uh, many times while I preach. And, and if I've went up these steps before, I know that when I get to the platform, uh, that this stage uh, is strong enough to hold my weight. So I don't have to doubt the stage uh, the next time that I walk the steps uh, because if I've walked up them before, and I want to make somebody happy in their soul tonight uh, that if he has uh, delivered you before, 
he will deliver you again. If he has healed you before, he will heal you again. If he has set you free before, you don't have to doubt it tonight. He will set you free again. The psalmist David said it this way. He said, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. We cannot afford to allow those things that he's done to slip from our memory. The Holy Spirit began to convict me of this today. I told you I'm not going to preach anything that I hadn't preached to myself. We're going through all this kind of stuff trying to get our house on this move that you know we're in and everything's been absolutely smooth and it was almost to the point I was holding my breath, you know. Like everything's going too good. I was telling somebody last, I was talking to the pastor I'm going to work for, I was talking to him last night about 1.30 this morning and I said, I said, it almost reminds me of one of those testimonies that somebody else has in church, you know. And you're thinking, when's that ever going to happen for me? Maybe I'm the only one who's ever said that. But uh, so we, I thought I had a, I thought I had a, a, a little roadblock this afternoon. And while we were eating lunch today, I think my, my father-in-law even said, he said, he said, park it just for a minute. I can see smoke coming out of your ears. Because I, I was thinking, I was trying to, I was trying to, to beat the, the roadblock. You know, I'm trying to stay a, a, a step ahead of the game. That's how I, that's how I roll. Right. You know, and, and, and the Lord, I got back to the house and the Lord convicted me. Yeah. He said, you remember when you first got married and you lived your first year at your mom and daddy's house? You remember that? Remember how fun that was? <laughs> I gotta be careful. My father-in-law's in the house. He don't want to hear half his stuff. But <clears throat> See there? I'm telling you, I know how to get a free will Baptist to shout amen. I, I... But he convicted me today. He said, you remember? You remember? You remember when... Remember when you got your house that you're living in now? And the only thing that you and your wife had was a blue metal. Can you turn me up? I can't hear myself. He said, he said, he said, the only thing that you had was a blue metal folding chair. That's all we had. It was in February when we got in the house. It's cold in North Carolina. I never had a fireplace. I didn't know about those starter logs, you know, back then, you know. <laughs> so I was outside trying to do it the Boy Scout way and get some wood. and try. So that didn't work. That's just stuff for Hollywood. And I went to Burger King. And we got us some, some cheeseburgers. And we, I finally got a, a, a fire that looked like a, it, it was ridiculous. Like it was embarrassing. <laughs> now, I mean, I can make one blaze now. I mean, it's been a few years. But that first time, it was, it was rough. But she was, you know, she, Oh, I got a little fire. <laughs> I was sitting here with a, a cheeseburger in front of the fireplace, you know. And as a romantic meal Aww. with a blue metal folding chair. That's all we had. And every time we'd go to a revival and we'd preach. and Somehow or another, God always gave us a little extra. I remember we went to Ashley, went to the, we went to the Ashley store, the, the one where everybody, they don't want this, so we're going we're gonna to lower it. It may have a little crack down the middle. Or we're gonna do. And I remember we got our, our first pleather <laughs> couch. And how I cried over that thing. Because we went from a blue metal folding chair to a pleather sofa. Now everything that we've got is ours. A little bit at a time, and I thought I had a roadblock, and the Lord convicted me. He said, you remember when you didn't have nothing? I took care of you then. He said, if I've done it before, 
I'll do it again. And he took me back to this passage and he said, remember the things that I've done. Don't look around your living room and think that you did this. I did this. And that's what the Lord began to speak to me. So we cannot afford to let what God has done. You cannot afford to let what God has done in your life. You cannot afford to let it begin to slip from your memory. We have to remember what the Lord has done in your life. And then I know that he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And if God performed his word before, he'll perform his word again. If we've had miracles before, we'll have miracles again. If he worked out a house before, he'll work out the house again. God has a way of showing up just in the nick of time. I wish somebody in this house would shout like you know that God is God all by himself. But this is what God told me. Staying in Hebrews and Verse number three in that passage, it said, when you hear the spoken word of the Lord, it said God is going to confirm confirm his word. I thought, how? He said, well, I'm glad you asked. He's going to bear witness. Both with signs and wonders and with miracles and through the gifts of of the Holy Ghost according to His will. So let me tell you tonight, whether I preach five more minutes or if I preach another 55 more minutes, when we walk into the house of God, we ought to walk in here expecting the gospel to be preached and signs and wonders to follow the word. We should come in here expecting miracles to take place. We should expect the gifts of the Holy Ghost to be in operation. We should not walk in here talking about Mary Kay and and, and all this kind of nonsense and who won the football game and who's going to do this and, and what position I'm after and what can I do and and how can I get the spotlight. What we ought to do is come in here and say I can't wait to hear the word of the Lord because I've got a miracle with my name on it and I'm not leaving here until I get it and I've got good gospel news. Your miracle has already left heaven which means it's on its way to find you right where you're at. That day you to praise him if you believe it. So make no mistake about it. I don't preach for your applause. I don't preach for your pats on the back. I don't preach to get recognized or for headquarters to know my name. But when I preach the gospel, I preach it so that lives are changed. I preach the gospel because I, I want to see what only God can do. I, I preach the gospel because I expect uh, the gifts of the Spirit uh, to be in operation. I, I preach the gospel because I want to see uh, Holy Ghost manifestations. I, I preach the gospel so that my father-in-law can hear the saith the Lord uh, and can speak to his body and say I'm healed uh, and is sleep like a baby. That's why I preach the gospel I expect signs and wonders to confirm this word. Somebody shout hallelujah. But I want to tell you, in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus instructed his preachers. He said, this is what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the easy part. Anybody can do that. And then he got real fun. He said, then I want you to do something else. He said, I want you to go and heal the sick. I want you to raise the dead. And I want you to then go out and cast 
out devils. And I'm going to tell you, that's what we're lacking nowadays. I mean, you, anybody, anybody can preach. I mean, all you got to do is be good at public speaking, find somebody else's sermon and write it down, and just regurgitate it. Anybody can preach. Oh, you know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But ain't nobody getting healed. We're preaching, but ain't nobody getting delivered. We're preaching, we're making a lot of noise, but ain't no devils being cast out. Uh, because we've got this, we've got this new gospel, you know. We we got this feel good gospel. We don't wanna, we don't wanna offend nobody. We wanna, we don't make wanna make nobody uncomfortable. We wanna put a band aid around their cancer and tell them everything's gonna be all right. We don't wanna call sin sin anymore. We don't wanna look at a liar and tell them they're going to hell. We wanna say, well, you know, you're just probably. You're, just a you're you're an extrovert with a lively imagination. No, you're a liar, and it's a sinner. And the soul that sinneth, it will die. But we don't have preachers with a backbone anymore to preach. Thus saith the Lord. They just want to have this gimme gospel. But I want to tell you, for as for me and my house. When he said that these signs will follow them that believe, I just believe in my heart that in the name of Jesus that we're gonna cast out devils. I believe tonight that when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. I believe what he said. And if he said it, you can take it to the bank because he's a God that cannot lie and if he said it, it will come to pass. And I like how he ended it because he said, greater work shall you do if you will believe. If you believe tonight, give him a hand clap of praise in the building. I'm closing. Which means absolutely nothing. I just hear those hot shot preachers say that. Thought I'd throw it in. But I want to take you there in Acts chapter 14 where I get back to my text. And we'll skip down to about verse number 8. And Your Bible said that there sat a certain man at Lystra. Said he was impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. But then... The man of God took the platform. And it said that this man heard Paul preaching, who steadfastly behold him and perceiving that he had the faith to be healed, said with a... Hmm, I like this. this. This gives me the permission to tell the sound man, turn me up because Paul did not believe in no quiet coffee shop church while they're sipping on their lattes and being comfortable your Bible said that Paul said with a loud voice stand up And your Bible said that when he said stand up on your feet, that your Bible said that that man who was born crippled leaped up and began to walk. I then flip over my Bible a couple of chapters later and I saw a little slave girl who was possessed by the devil. She was being used to fortune tell and to pad the pockets of her owners. And the Bible said that she started following Paul 
around the city one day and she was wreaking havoc everywhere that she went and she'd been causing a stir in the city and finally Paul who had a backbone unlike most preachers in America today he had enough of it he turned around looked her right in the eye and said in the name of Jesus Christ you devil come out of her and it said immediately she didn't go to Christian counseling it said immediately she was set free that's what kind of power we've got if we'll proclaim the word of God if you'll ever so carefully flip your Bible again over to chapter number 19 in the book of Acts your Bible said that Paul found his way to the city of Ephesus. I like this passage. It kind of cracks me up because it said that he found some fellow believers and he asked them. Now, I'll be careful here. You know, my father-in-law is free will Baptist, so I'm not talking about the free wills. (laughs) Apparently, Paul found the deacon board at the first Baptist church of the church of Ephesus because he looked at them and this is the words he said to them. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And the deacon elder said from the first Baptist church, he said, I don't have a clue what in the wide world you're talking about. I ain't never heard of such Holy Ghost. I was reading that and I thought to myself, that's the wrong thing to tell a man who's had an encounter with the third person of the Trinity. Because it said that he laid his hands on the deacon board of the First Baptist Church and he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said that those boys began to speak in tongues and they started prophesying. That's what happens when you confirm the word of God. He'll show up with signs and wonders and miracles shouting amen to the word of God. You'll never convince me, never convince me that the days of signs and wonders are over. There may be some whispering going on in our churches. There may be some doubting if that Holy Ghost thing, you know, that tongue talking stuff, if that's real or not. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be like Paul. I'm going to keep on testifying. I'm going to keep on testifying. Bro, if you'll just, if you'll turn that altar music on just real, real soft. Don't, don't blare me out on this one. I want to, I want to end on a couple of testimonies right quick. I, it was, it was in May of 2018. I was in, I was in Michigan, I think. Michigan, Indiana, somewhere up there. And there's a lady that lives here in Oklahoma. who the doctors had told her she had cancer and that was it. It was over. She was done for. I was preaching at the General Baptist Church up in Michigan. General Baptist is a fancy word for their free will Baptist is what they are. I mean, so they ain't scared of this thing. I preached a Sunday through Wednesday night revival. Preached just as hard there as I preach here. And on Wednesday night, the Lord said, you're going to give, you're going to to call a healing service. And I said, are you kidding me right now? You want me to have a healing service in the Baptist church? They ain't down with that, bro. He said, that's what you're going to do. So I had a healing service. I told the pastor, he said, go for it. I went for it. It took me about an hour to pray for all those people. There was probably 85 people there that came down to the altar for every sort of sickness and issue that they had. We prayed for every one of them. The Lord told me, he said, I want you to go and FaceTime Pam. 
She's in Oklahoma. We're in Michigan. FaceTime her. We got the phone. We FaceTimed her. I could see her. She could see me. I said, Pam, I'm in Michigan. And we're in a healing service. And the Lord told me to call you. And we're going to pray for you. And I scanned the crowd. I said, Pam, we're at a Baptist church. Don't let that freak you out, Pam. I said, Pam, we're going to pray for you. And I went to that passage in Acts chapter 19 that God did unusual miracles through the works of Paul, through handkerchiefs and aprons. And I said, Pam, I, I hadn't got good enough of a preacher yet to use that little white handkerchief, you know, those hot shots use. Nicely folded and stuff. And I don't know how they do it. I mean, I get in my living room sometimes when I'm by myself and I try it out and I just can't do it. I try to be real cool like those, those big shots. You don't have it right there in your back pocket. I can't do it. I said, Pam, I get real hot and sweaty when I preach this and I've got a, I got a towel because I'll be soaking wet. I said, but this, this, this towel has went all over this country. Yeah, it's wiped my sweat, but that ain't no, no big deal. But what it has been, has been in some revival services. It's been in revival services, Pam, where I prayed for people and I watched them be healed. I said, Pam, what we're going to do is we're going to saturate this towel. We're going to saturate it with oil. And we're going to pray for you. We're going to send it to you in the mail and I don't want you to put it in the washing machine. Don't wash it. But go to bed with it. Carry it with you everywhere you go. Because Pam, the Lord told me He's going to heal you. Now you got to understand something. When God says something like that, you better make sure it's God. Because if you come up out here and you say, well, you know, I got, I got, a, I got a headache. That's, those are easy. Pray for you, and I know you're going to go to bed, and you're going to sleep that thing off. You're going to be fine in the morning. Woo but when it's cancer, I said, that's what we're going to do, Pam. God said he's going to heal you. And we put enough anointing oil on that thing. I think that towel weighed about 15 pounds when I got finished praying for it. We prayed for it. And I know the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. And it was everything mad I could do to not hold me talking in tongues in that General Baptist Church, but I held it. I was, I was praying in tongues in my mind. I said, God, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to heal her because I know what you said. I know, know, and I know that you will. We mailed it to her. That was in May. Me and Kim were flying somewhere. I don't know where we were flying, but as soon as we landed, got on the runway and to land and go back to the terminal, I turned my phone on and like everybody else that's got social media, you go to Facebook, you know, and this was in August. I took a screenshot of it. But it looked like a red billboard from old Pam. It said, I am cancer free. <laughs> Don't catch me back there and try to tell me that the days of signs and wonders and miracles are over. I remember when we first started evangelizing. We were in Marietta, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And I was preaching and this woman came up to the altar. And when she walked up to that altar, I'm going to tell you, the devil started fighting my mind. Because she had a tumor on the side of her neck about the size of a grapefruit. And the devil said, you met, you met your match now, hotshot. What you going to do now? Because everybody can see that. I got that oil. Poured it on my hands. And I slapped my hand against her neck. And I felt that tumor hit the side of my hand. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ... Be healed. And I felt that tumor 
dry up from off my hand and off of her neck. And she walked off her neck as smooth as mine. Don't tell me. The signs and wonders are over. I, I, I could go on and on. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one more. I remember I was 18 years old. I was preaching revival in eastern North Carolina. And, and it's supposed to have been a Sunday morning service only. I brought one suit, one shirt, one tie. And the pastor asked me to come back that night and say a word at 18. I'd only preached one time, so I only had one good sermon. And that Sunday night, we got out of church around 11.30. People laid out all over the altar. I remember laying in the, in the choir loft, and my, my head was on my aunt's lap. I was so tired. I must have dozed off. She woke me up. She said, can you? I said, can I what? She said, can you preach the revival this week? So my mom and dad had to UPS me all of my suits so I'd have something to wear. And I said, God, what in the wide world am I doing? I don't have anything to preach. In a church that averaged about 300 people, there was, it was standing room only, around six, 700 every night. And every day, God gave me a fresh word to preach. And we averaged getting out around midnight. I'll never forget that revival. People throwing packs of cigarettes down and pain pills down and antidepressants down and still healed to this day. But one thing that, that took my took notice was I had my, my, my first cousin. She's the same age as I am and 18 at the time. She was sitting on the front row and she came up to the altar. She whispered in my ear with tears in her eyes. She said, Stephen, I just went to the, to the eye doctor and I'm, I'm legally blind. The music was rolling. I mean, it was Pentecost from the top to the bottom. I mean, it was absolute spiritual mayhem. Drums going, the guitars going. They were in the middle of a verse, and I just cut it off right then, just stopped it. And I said, if you're all right with your family being sick, you go ahead and don't have that. But he's messed with the wrong one. And I laid my hands over her eyes begin to pray for my cousin. And 22 years later, now that we're 40, she's the second in charge of her school with 2020 perfect vision. Don't tell me that the days of signs and wonders are over. So I said all that to say this. Whatever need that you have in your life tonight, I just believe that God is ready to confirm His Word. I've preached the Bible tonight. I've preached it with every ounce of strength that I've got. The Bible said that He would confirm His Word with signs and wonders following. If there's a need in this house, I'm not going to make you stand tonight. I don't want, I'm not going through the ritualistics of, of, of religion. You don't have to stand and bow your head. But if there's a need in this house tonight and you have a situation that only God can fix, I want you to come down here to this altar. We're going to pray for you tonight. And I just believe that God is going to...